so my brand is basically around that. I'm a guy that that you know likes to step out, looks for opportunities to to break away from the way the herd behaves and the direction the herd's going, yes. because it's my experience that if you can figure out ways of doing things differently in a way that people care about, then you found the juice, you found the magic dust, right? And so that's my life. I'm just a be different or be dead Roy, trying to practice that all the time, shedding the constraints of compliance and conformity, putting the textbook down, doing things that light fires in people. Welcome to the Audacious Living Podcast. Hosted by my man, Audley Stevenson, the odd man. He'll unpack wisdom and insights from a cross-section of top quality performers in business, media, sports, entertainment, and lifestyle to uncover key elements to help you live your best audacious life ever. So without further ado, here is the odd man. Audacious folks, it's Audley Stevenson back for another edition of the most audacious podcast the internet has to offer. This is the Audacious Living Podcast, and I appreciate you for being here as we continue our ongoing goal of helping our listeners live their best audacious lives ever. As always, I encourage you to follow us on our social media channels. We're on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook under the handle The Audacious Pod. And of course, if you're watching on our YouTube channel, then you know all you've got to do is tap that bell down below. Ding, ding, ding. And you're connected to all great things audacious related. Now, going down the road less traveled is an important one for us to take, and and there are those, including my next guest, who strongly believe that not not breaking away from the herd and standing out from others will lead to our downfall. The title of his book says it all, Be Different or Be Dead. Uh, Roy Osing uh, is the guest. He's a former president and an entrepreneur with over 40 years of successful and unmatched executive leadership experience. Uh, You'll hear about the power of having an only statement and the difference it can make in our lives. Roy has been living, breathing this his entire life and it is his passion to help people understand why it's so critical that we have to break away from the norm, get away from the herd and do our own thing. It really is a powerful conversation that I'm certain all of you will enjoy. So without any further ado, I'm going to slide out of the way and give you a chance to hear from Roy Ose up next on the Audacious Living Podcast. Hey, Roy, thank you for joining me here today on the Audacious Living Podcast. It, it, it's such a pleasure to have you. We've been, you know, we've been trying to schedule this and make this work for a while now, and the day is finally here. And again, I thank you for, for, for making the time doing this. My pleasure. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. Now, you know, on this podcast, we, we, we spend uh, an exorbitant amount of time really promoting uh, the, the significance and, and, and being our bold audacious self and and and, and by doing so uh, we're, we're stepping into the person that we're we're, we're supposed to be uh, and and doing so very uniquely to ourselves and authentically to ourselves and so I think a little bit about the work that you do and uh, I think there's definitely some overlaps and some connections and um and again one of the, one of the reasons why I'm glad to have you here so maybe as a starting point um we can fill our listeners in a little bit about uh, sort of you and, and the work you do and, 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 how, and what you do to help people get to a, be- a better place. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I, I guess in a word, I'm, I was fortunate enough uh, during my life to be asked to undertake a pretty significant challenge in the internet business. And I was asked to be president of a company. It was an early stage internet company. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we basically grew the organization to a billion dollars a year terms of annual revenue and i i guess the the reason that that's significant for me is the methods that we use to actually achieve the result were not common methods you know they were they were non-traditional they were audacious moves as as i would say um and they were breakaway from what people normally thought and so my brand is basically around that i'm a guy that that you know likes to step out looks for opportunities to to break away from the way the herd behaves and the direction the herd's going 
yes. because it's my experience that if you can figure out ways of doing things differently in a way that people care about, then you found the juice, you found the magic dust, right? And so that's my life. I'm just a be different or be dead Roy, trying to practice that all the time, shedding the constraints of compliance and conformity, putting the textbook down, doing things that light fires in people. I mean, that's the leadership style of work for me. And so I've been doing this for 40 years, wrote my first book in 09, and I'm continuing to hammer away, oddly, trying to get the conversation to change, man, away from copying into creativity, being audacious, not boring. I to totally love it. I, and you, you know, I'm going to like that for sure, right? I'm all, gonna, I'm all about that. But I think, a, a, you know, a, a really important part of this is the idea of, of breaking away from the herd um, because of the fact that um, it's safer, right? It's safer as opposed to stepping out by yourself. Right. Oh, the, the, the herd is, is a comfortable, warm place where there's no conflict. Right. There's no risk involved. It's just like the unfortunately and people think that that's a no risk position in my world. That's the high risk position. If you're part of the herd, you're not noticed. You're giving nobody any any particular reason why they should even pay attention to you. And yes. by the way, in a world that we're in today, that's high risk. And so the way to minimize and mitigate risk, to get out of the herd, find a way, okay, to, to, to satisfy what people crave in a way that nobody else does. And we can talk about being the only one that does what you do if you want, because I've had some, I've had to create my own differentiation piece, mm. but get out there and do that, okay? Because when you're in that mode, you are separate, you're noticeable, you're not benign and insipid, because that's what happens when you're in the herd. All right. Yes. So trying to get people, though, to break away from the momentum of the past uh, that encourages conformity, that encourages compliance, that encourages sameness is a really difficult thing to do. But, you know, that's the that's the, the mission I'm on is try and break that mold, man. So when what, what I'd love to get your, 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 your thoughts on is when you're at that decision point, if you will. Uh, how do you know you're making that right decision, that right step? In terms of stepping out, you mean? Yeah, that's right. Like, so well, for example, I mean, in, 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 your, in your company, right? This is a new, oh, right? This yeah. is all brand new stuff. You didn't have a blueprint. You didn't have, a, you know, someone to follow, but you stepped out anyway. Well, and the beauty is, yeah, we chose not to be a follower. We chose to, to, to be a leader in, in, in um, a practical ways of, of, of running a business. Um, you know, I'm not a textbook guy. I mean, I got a university degree, blah, blah, blah. But I got to tell you, when it came to, to actually doing what we had to do in this business, it wasn't textbook stuff that, that got the engines going. Okay. Right. It was figuring out what lit fires in people uh, and, and creating a strategy and a plan that was tight enough to get us going and loose enough to keep us going is kind of the way I would describe it. And we, we just headed slightly, slightly west. We figured out how to differentiate ourselves, um, get people to believe in what we were doing, help them along the way. Because I'm a leadership by serving around kind of guy. I'm not a, mm -hmm. any other kind of leader. And it was always the right thing to do. And, and in my view, people told us it was the right thing to do. And the, re the way they told us was simply the passion that they yes. exhibited towards yeah. it. That yeah. told me all I needed to know. And because, yeah. you know, I was on enough to, honest enough to say, okay, we're going to try this, this mm -hmm. direction. I, th I think it's right. But the only way we're going to find out is to actually do it. And we will know in retrospect whether we did it right. And that's yeah. not because we're it's not smart. Nobody, you know what drives me crazy? Oddly, there's a people that actually think they have it figured out in the very beginning. <laughs> you know, in a world with, with so much change, so much unpredictable, so much pain, so much agony, they actually figure that they can get the plan right the first time. Right. No, right. I'm a guy that says, let's head west and find out through execution and learning, right, through people, whether or not we got it right. So I would say that if that the people who are wanting to step out, yep. don't wait for permission. Mm -hmm. Don't wait for, for comfort that it's the right decision. If, if that's the case, you will never do anything. Just take the step, learn from it, trust yourself, then take another step. This is a game of, of baby steps. Like I, I call them nano inches worth of progress. Get an inch fast, get an inch fast, right? Right, right. You just right. Sort of increment your way along. A lot of people say, no, 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 no. We need the big play. There's no, no. big play. 
it's a, it's a, like, well, if, if, you're, if you're baseball lover, they talk about small ball, right? Like, you know, you, you, yeah. you win a game off singles, that those are big home runs. And there's nothing exactly, wrong with that. That's exactly right. And yet, and yet it gets played up, okay, in the world of academia in a different way. Okay, because let's find that blue ocean, oddly. Let's find that blue ocean and we'll be successful. Even though that 99%, okay, of the businesses and organizations out there, they play in red oceans. They need help to differentiate themselves and actually right. be successful in a highly contested market. Yes. You know, blue ocean is merely a, a figment of some academic's imagination. I'd love to find, nobody finds blue oceans. Or if they do, there's one in a billion, okay? Right. Let's get practical. Right, right. I, 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 I saw, I actually don't saw, I heard a song and the, and the song lyric said, that if we only travel on sunny days, we'll never get our destination. <laughs> and I loved it. I loved it. It was great. Sunny days. Right? Yeah, I know. That's wouldn't that be nice? It is. The thing is, is, Nirvana does not exist in the real world. Mm. Okay, so if, if I'm sitting down and face to face with a, a startup CEO, yep, and he's saying, "Roy, how do I get going?" The last thing I'm going to do is paint him a pretty picture. So that's that's being intellectually dishonest, right? right. I mean, right. I mean, this is painful. You know what? I learned that pain was a strategic concept a long time ago, and you have to treat it so, right? You just do, because if you can't cut the pain, you can't do the work. Gotcha. It has to gotcha. be done if you want to be different and yep. serve yep. people in an amazing way. And that's the kind of journey I've been on for a long time. I, I, would, I would imagine, you know being different, being audacious, uh, involves some level of unconventionality. I'm just curious, what sort of unconventional things did you have to do? Uh, you talked about, you know, employees of the company and, and staff, what kind of unconventional things did you do? Yeah, it's totally that. I mean, if you, if you want to, to, to go this way, it's, it's about, I call it sort of breaking away from everything that you know, all of the energy that's behind you, the force behind you, you need to create discontinuities in that. And a lot of people <clears throat> talk about morphing. Okay. And I say, no, no, that's not what I'm talking about. A morph is just kind of like you're on a fulcrum and you kind of make a swivel, right? I'm not talking about a swivel. I'm talking about severing and creating a new direction. That's what breakaway is all about. So let me give you a, a couple of, of, of examples here. I mean, one of the biggest problems facing us today is in business and in life is, is what I would call differentiation. What okay. makes us special in a way that other people care about? And in a business point of view, uh, the whole issue of how you differentiate your business from others is hugely important. And I got to be honest with you, it's not being done very well today okay. because it relies on things like we are better, we are best, we are the number one, we're market leaders. And all that is is what I call claptrap. It's a claptrap way of describing your own narcissism as an organization. So it's all what you feel about yourself, right? Differentiation is supposed to consist of words that you say to customers that convince them to do business with you and no one else. So I fought and fought and fought through this whole thing. I had to come up with my own solution to that. So Roy's solution to differentiation is to create an only statement. Okay, yeah. I am the only one who... We are the only ones who, okay, we're not better, we're not best, because I don't even know what that means, oddly, but we are the only ones who do, does a certain thing. Now, the interesting thing about the only statement is, first of all, you can observe it because it's binary. It either exists or yep. it doesn't right. exist, Makes right? Yep. You can prove it, okay, et cetera. And so I, I've spent literally 40 years working with organizations around this notion of only to try and dispel okay, the fog that's been promulgated by academics around differentiation that involves, if you can find a solution to a problem and you claim that, you will have an advantage. That's BS. Because if you're doing it the same way as everybody else, you'll never have an advantage. The no. only way to get at this is to create your only state. Anyways, we can go into that more if you want, but that was one example. Nobody's done it then. Nobody talks about now. I am the only one that talks about the only one. <laughs> All right. Another example is I have this thing because I'm such an execution oriented guy. Like if you can't okay. execute it, I don't even want to talk about it. Right. 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 So As opposed to just talking about the theory of it and what it could do. And but if you haven't taken I mean, that step, then what are we doing? Yeah, it's like an intellectual orgasm. That's what I call those sort of things. <laughs> 
don't want to, by the way, oddly, I've never used that expression before. I'm going to write that down because I think I can use it more. Anyways, I'm highly, <laughs> highly, <laughs> ex role, bro. Keep going. highly execution oriented guy. I'm the, the how-to guy. And one of the things that occurred to me is you can't execute if the organization is full of grunge and crap. Mm -hmm. So I came up with this notion called cleanse the internal environment. Okay, of things that get in the way of people doing their jobs, of rules and procedures that do nothing but anger customers, et cetera, because all that does is, is, is slow the mechanism inside to a point where you can't execute. If you can't execute, you can't perform well, right? right. So I came up with this couple of notions. One was called cut to crap. And pe people, <laughs> people looked at me and said, Roy, you're president of a company. You can't, you can't call it cut to that. crap. <laughs> well, I said, well, what do you think? Well, why don't we call it, you know, strategically inappropriate things? I said, are you kidding me? I'm going to call them stupid things, but I will not call them strategically inappropriate. Right. And it was cut the crap state. And it was a really simple thing. It says, tell me, people, tell me what's getting in the way of you doing your job and executing the strategy, because I'm going to call that crap and it will be my leadership team's role to get rid of that stuff, okay? Either we change it, we get rid of it, we cleanse the intro. You have no idea. I would show up in the workplace with a white long sleeve t-shirt with crap on the front, crap written on the back and a big X, right? So people would be saying, oh my God, here comes Roy cutting the crap again in the workplace. Well, guess what? We had fun with it. They got it, the people in the organization. I got to tell you, execution went up. That's just, there was a whole bunch yeah. of things like this. Yeah point I'm making is the simplicity of things that lit fires in people to do their jobs with passion and drive to a billion is, is phenomenal. And yet they get missed because we have too many thinkers and not enough practitioners. Mm. And that's the kind of guy. I am. So there's a whole bunch of little things like that. I had yes. one person say, well, okay, let's just take that cleansy environment. Can you show how much of the billion was, <laughs> was attributable to that program? And I said, no. And I never will <laughs> get serious because yeah. while I'm doing that, I'm not having fun executing it. That's All right. I know is right. in aggregate, every one of those small things yes. help drive to the billion. Yes. And I don't care by how much. And that doesn't, he just doesn't kept matter. rocking and kept doing it. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter. And you said fun, right? I mean, there's a part where you can't measure fun and the enjoyment of the journey and the enjoyment of the process and the satisfaction of accomplishing something. You can't measure that stuff. So why even bother spinning your wheels? Well, the other thing is, you know, people want, seem to want to understand cause and effect at a micro level. And that we're taught to do that by university and stuff like that. And I'm not den denigrating. That's fine. You can do that. But in the meantime, when you're trying to prove the relationship, your feet aren't moving. Mm. Feet need to be moving. Okay. If you're running a business, right. Or if you're on, on route to a, a, hopefully a rewarding career, your feet have to keep moving. Yes. Okay. Ponder no longer, dude. You got to start do something. Make a mistake. Maybe learn from that and, and continue to move on. I like so that. We ponder, had, ponder no longer. I love that one. Ponder no longer. Well, too many people do that, right? They're satisfied, and be, it's because they're risk adverse, right? Mm -hmm. They're risk adverse, and there's no riskier position to take than being risk averse, right? Because when you're risk averse, you're not doing anything. You're trying right. to seek perfection, which doesn't exist. We live in an imperfect world. Why would you expect an organization or individuals to behave perfectly in an imperfect world? Right. I mean, like that's a, that's a dichotomy. So mm -hmm. what we tried to do is cut through all of that and find things that resonated with people. Little sure. things. Like another sure. program we had was hiring for goosebumps, right? Oh. Now, HR, yeah, I know, right? What the hell is hiring for goosebumps? <laughs> well, it's a really simple concept. Right. The whole thing is based on the fact that if you want to provide, you know, memorable customer experiences, and that was a heavy part of our, our, of our platform, then you have to have people that can work well with customers, right? Right. One of the things, one of the things that they have to do is they have to fundamentally, in my words, love human beings. If they didn't love humans, they weren't going to do very well in a customer service, customer facing job, sure. right? Yeah. You yeah, you can't take somebody who would rather be taking inventory and shove them in front of a customer and have them dazzle the customer. It just never happens because you can't teach people to love humans. You can teach them to grin, oddly, but mm -hmm. you cannot teach them mm -hmm. to love people. 
So I had this hiring method because this challenge was then, well, how do I identify these people that have this, this DNA of loving humans running through their bloodstream? Yeah. So I came up with this crazy little thing. So in the middle of an interview, and I would be involved as president in a lot of interviews, right? It was intimidating to a degree, but I, I had to do it. So I'd, I'd ask you a question. Okay, oddly, do you like humans? Now, the first thing is you'd kind of look at me weirdly and sort of sit back and thinking, oh, okay, this... I. I, I don't understand the question, but it's obviously a, an important question. And I think the answer is yes. So you would say, well, yeah, Roy, I love humans. Mm -hmm. So then I would follow up and say, okay, tell me a story. Tell me a story that would show me your love for human beings. This is where you got the separation of people who intellectually understood the question, but didn't really have a story because it was kind of like leave you like a cold fish when they told the story, yep. as yep. opposed to the human who really did have loving people in their veins and told me a story that just rocked my socks with passion and depth and honest caring and emotion. Mm -hmm. I hired that person yeah. because I can teach him the job. They give me goosebumps. When I heard their story, I hired them. And if they had to be taught the job, which most of them did anyways, I can do that, but I can't teach them to give me goosebumps. Yes. They have to be born yes. with it. So that was another crazy thing. The HR people thought I was crazy. They thought I was <laughs> gonna, absolutely like, crazy. Well, you're breaking all, you, again, I would talk about unconventional, right? It's exactly what you're doing. And yet, if you looked at our customer service results, they yeah. went crazy. They yeah. went through the roof. And by the way, we didn't measure them on, are you satisfied? We measured the customers on, did we knock your socks off? Did we mm -hmm. take your breath away, right? Did we blow your away yourself away? Did we dazzle you? That yeah, was the level yeah. because being satisfactory wasn't good enough because when you're satisfactory, oddly, you know this, you're not loyal. That's right. That's right. You yeah, you're going on the next away. one. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So a couple of examples. Well, great ones. And thank you for sharing those. You know, you, I want to go back early in the conversation. You're talking about, you know, the, the, the concept of being the best or, you know, be, even, even perfection for that matter. And, and I think what that does and, and why that is such a, uh, it, it's, I, I call it like a form of fool's gold, if you will, because you think it's something really, really good, but it's actually something that hurts you because you'd stop, you, you, if once you're the best, you know, you're not thinking about self-improving or continuing every day or, or even practicing to get better because you're like, I'm the best. I'm perfect. What more is left to be done? Whereas we always can find room to grow. We can always find room to get better at what we're doing. And so I wanted just to throw that out there because we, 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 as you touched on that. I uh, <clears throat> total, totally agree. In fact, you know, the, the use, the nomenclature uh, is, is actually a, a really uh, problematic thing. Okay, because when... We, it, to me, it's, it's continuing narcissism. We got so many ways of reinforcing what your view is of you. And that's part of the narcissistic trend we've got going on in our society today and in business. When you say you're the best, the first thing, the first question I says, I ask you is says who? I want to know what that means because as a customer, it's not meaningful to me. That's right. It makes that's no right. sense at all. Okay, so you got two problems. First of all, you're not going to convince anybody that you're the best because first of all, if everybody says they're the best, oddly, then you've mm -hmm. created a whole herd of people of sameness because they all think they're the best. And yes. then the, the use of the word, the meaning of the word, it just gets absorbed into uh, ignominity, for God's sakes. Okay. And of course, it doesn't provide you any motivation. What provides you motivation is if you claim that you're the only one and you find out that you're not, guess what you're going to do? You're going to say, ah, okay. Now I've got some hard data. I know why I'm not the only one. Yeah. Now I can actually do some continuous improvement and move yes. forward. And then you go try it again and you get into this do loop. The problem is better, best, number one, they're clock trap expressions at best. They're meaningless yeah. and they're promulgated yeah. by people who have a view of themselves. And that's the only thing that's important. And the problem with that is it robs society and the economy of growth. Right. You right. don't move when you think, you're that way. You just don't, as you said. Well, well, and I, and I think too, your 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 position or your status. If you're saying I'm better than or I'm the best or you know, above, it's always in relation to someone else. You're not standing on your own. Like if I'm saying I'm better than, who's the then? Like who are they, right? And so, but but by very, and that's why I very much I do like the only, and and you know you that's that's you, you stand alone, and I and. 
Honestly, Roy, I love it. I think it's a fantastic approach and even just a mindset. I am the only one. Yeah, that's thank you for that, because that's absolutely what we're trying to do here. What I'm trying to do is change the conversation away from claptrap towards the only. All right. And that is a shift, a shift in mindset. And, and to also recognize that that there is a place for comparatives. OK, yeah. but the place for comparatives is how you differentiate what you do uniquely from everybody else without using words like better. Yeah. OK, because unfortunately, they've they've lost their meaning, as I have said, and they're not extremely helpful. I mean, hell, in terms of building a business, how do you build a business when you say you're the best? How do you do that? First of all, I don't know what it means. And it's going back to reinforce the point you made earlier. So, yes, it is a mind shift. I had a I have a personal little um, little gimmick that I use uh, to keep this stuff alive, to, to keep it a, a just a, a heavy juice for me. And every time I'm confronted with a challenge, I always, I call it my be different lens. I always ask myself the question, how can I do this differently in a way that matters to people? And I got to say that in a way that matters to people, because this isn't about narcissism. It's not about the color of your hair or for you and I, the lack of it. It has <laughs> nothing to do with that. It's yeah, about yeah. how are we addressing what people care about in a way that only we do. That's the whole point of the only and I have this lens. I'm always asking, how can I do this differently? I have four grandchildren. I ask myself the question, how can I be an only papa to these yeah. kids? How can I be different than every other grandfather out there in a way that they care about? And that guides yeah. me. It's a useful tool. I just, no, it really is. And I'm just sort of thinking, as you were talking, I'm just sort of thinking about, you know, what if everyone was taking that approach? What if everyone was trying to figure out how they could be the only person i mean cr creativity goes through the roof productivity is a whole other level um it's it's just it's, yeah I, I think the possibilities are profound and 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 the difference that they can make uh, are astounding not even just in my life but how we impact others because now if i'm thinking about how can i be the only company that services you know customers in this way or be the only leader that does this for employees or or you know whatever that context is you're just, you're, you're taking it to a whole other level now. Well, the way, the way I think about it, you're absolutely right, is if you think about the bell curve, yes. right, there's going to be superstars and people who are totally unfortunate at the extreme ends of the curve, right? Yes. Most of us mere mortals are huddled around the, 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 the bell, the, the gut or the, the cluster, right, yes. of that bell curve. What if we could take that cluster and move them an inch mm. to the right? To, to, towards the, the sort of be different model of like the Steve Jobses and others of Lady Gaga's of the world over there. Right, right, right. We can move a little bit. To your point, the energy that that releases, right? The improvement that that, unleash, that unleashes in, in society and in the economy is unbelievable. So, I mean, you get a whole bunch of people running around trying to figure out how to be the only one who does something that people cares about. Wow. I mean, that's just got to be a wonderful environment to be in. But you don't have that today. You got everybody, you got all these narcissists running around trying to be best without really knowing what the hell that means. <laughs> I've got no clue what the best is. I'm striving for it anyways. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. So, so, so be different and be dead. I, I want you, you know, you, you don't mean dead in the literal sense. So I wonder if you define what dead is. Yeah, so from an organizational point, uh, it literally is uh, an organization that dies. I mean, there's plenty of, 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 of uh, examples around where organizations have gone out of business. Right. And one of the primary reasons is they haven't been able to differentiate themselves. Mm. And so I literally mean, if you can't differentiate yourself in the long run, you got a bad road. And one of the consequences might be you die as an organization. Okay, and it's easy. There's a bunch of them around, and all you get to do, look at look at all of the, the retailers that have bit the dust in the face of of uh, of cyber and sure. online buying, et cetera, et cetera. They haven't been able to adapt, and when they have adapted, they haven't been different. It's the same old, same old. So I literally mean that. In terms of careers, yeah, okay, uh, you can literally have a very unsuccessful career, um, and I wouldn't go so far as to say that 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 you die. But your spirit, your hopes for careers are, are greatly reduced 
if you can't find a way to be special in a way that other people care about. Like I keep saying to me, there's no, and you got to be able to, got to be able to talk that out. You got to be visible in a way that makes sense for people. Again, not being narcissistic, but being, doing special things that matter to the organization, if you happen to be in a company, right? And being noticed for that. I, one of my favorite expressions is, you know, there's no sense being really smart and doing things like this if the only person that knows about it is your mom. <laughs> as much as we love our moms it's not love enough moms. I love moms but come on we got to move beyond moms they're always going to say that anyways right, right. <laughs> yeah so I literally think about it this way the ultimate consequence of not being different is very negative if you don't like the words dead okay right. i like it because it nails it yeah. Like, how else can you define an organization that no longer exists where people lose their job, shareholders lose their investment? How else can you define it? Let's call it what it is. Mm -hmm. It's death. That organization is dead. They're not providing any, they don't have a heartbeat. They don't, they're not an organ organism anymore. They're not satisfying anymore. That's death. They're not growing. And the other thing I want to say to you is let's look at all of the entrepreneurs out there, the new businesses. 50% yep. of those new ideas are dead in in four, uh, three three years or less. You know, the mm -hmm. average statistic on a startup says chances are you're not going to make it. Now, what does that mean using other examples? It means when you start out, you're going to die quickly if you don't do the right thing. And that right thing is you can't differentiate yourself. If you can't differentiate yourself, you're done. Maybe I could have used the word done, but it wasn't as effective. <laughs> no, I, no, listen, I, I think what, you, what you're saying makes absolute sense. It hits home and nails it, as you said. And, and, and really, I guess people, it's non-growth, non-development, non-improving, whatever, but it all still means the same thing. And so uh, I, I think then a natural line of thinking, a last a natural question in Roy would be, what's the next step then of, to, be not, to be undead? <laughs> Well, look, at you You got to take a step back and start <clears throat> the process. Like I've been saying, well, how do you do it? Well, I've had to create a, a process in, in my organization um, to actually create a, a strategic direction for it. I call it strategic direction. It can be a life plan. It can be a career plan because it uses the same elements. I call it a strategic game plan. Mm -hmm. We literally can do, I do this for clients in literally 48 hours, oddly. I mean, it's it's just so efficient. And it's a simple process because- the standard uh, tr uh, methods that, that they use to create strategic plans are not very useful from an execution point of view. I couldn't use them. I would spend way too much money. It would take six months and subject matter experts to come up with a strategy that I couldn't execute. So like I told you earlier, if I can't execute it, I don't even want to talk about it. So I had to create right. my own. So Roy's planning process goes like this. If you can answer three questions, you have yeah. your plan, okay? What are the questions? One is how big do you want to be? Now that's a question about top line revenues. In 24 months, what, what is your top line? What do you want your top line to be? Okay. So in other words, if you're at 5 million a year, do you want to be seven? Do you want to be 20? Do you want to be 10? The reason I ask that question first is the answer defines the risk profile and the characteristic of the plan. You see, the irony is most strategies are created first then they look at the number, the, the, the financial impact. The problem with that is a lot of people don't like the financials. They change the assumptions and they don't change the strategy. You got to have them hooked, okay? Right. So how big do you want to be? Okay, yeah, I want to be 10 million. Next question, where are you going to get the money? Who do you want to serve? So that's a question about target markets, customer groups. Which groups have the latent potential to deliver the 10 million? That's what we want to know. It's not a mass market. It's not 150 market segments. I want to know the critical few markets that will get me to the 10 million. Now, this is a tough one for most organizations because it requires you to really understand your customer base and it requires you to focus. Most people want to go play. I call it chasing yummy incoming. They just want to chase, 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 right? So, okay. Third question is how are you going to compete and win in those customer groups that you've just defined? So- yes. That's, that's where the only statement comes in, because the answer to that question is we're going to compete and win by being the only ones in this customer group that does this. And that completes the loop. Literally, that's where you have to start. 
because the source of, of being different is literally the answer to those three questions, which culminates in the third question, which then kind of like devolves into strategies and tactics and, and objectives yeah. within that. Yeah. But it's created within a differentiated uh, promise to serve, if I, if I can use that term, yeah. called the only state. Yeah. That's how you get started. I do this with, uh, with small business clients, particularly who are infatuated with the approach. Unfortunately, the, the large organizations think that they know it all. <laughs> so they're not really interested. We all know what they, how they behave, right? Sure. But sure. small businesses uh, are really interested. So I work a lot with them. I, I work a lot with young professionals yep. to create their own, own uh, career plan and their own personal only statement with clarity, which leads them and guides them now along a particular path that they didn't know before. Roy, give me an example of the ideal or perfect only statement. What does that look like? Okay, first of all, there's no such thing as a perfect only statement. Perfect, there you go. There you go. See, I'm eating my own dog food. I, if I told you there was a perfect one, you'd say, hey, wait a minute, Roy, but you told me earlier. No, look at the only I, I wasn't trying to trick you, by the way. That wasn't a trick. Okay. I'm good. Look at, and I, this is what I say to people. It's always a draft. You need to understand it's a draft. It never is permanent. Why? Because the world keeps changing. Yes. Yeah. How could you have a perfect anything in a world that's imperfect and constantly changing? That's nonsensical, right? I've learned to work in that world and create an organization that delivered a billion dollars. So I know that there's certain things you can do to do it. But let me give you an example of an only statement that we created with this company in, in Eastern Canada. And it, the company was in the boat selling business. Okay. So the CEO got a hold of me, said, look, it, here's my boat line. We need a strategy. Can you help me? And I said, fine. So we had a, we had a great 48 hours, literally his was a bit, he was two and a half days. So it was a bit longer, but, but because he, he was having way too much fun with it. So we ended up with the following only statement. The company's name is BCI Marine. I'll give them a plug. They're tremendous. They're out of the Toronto area, Montreal area in Quebec. Yeah. Here's their only statement. BCI Marine is the only complete service provider committed to delivering solutions to grow a boat dealer's business. They're not in the boat selling business at all. Right. Everybody else is flogging boats. You know what these guys are doing? They're flogging solutions to grow the boat dealer's business. Mm -hmm. Completely reframed their business. And he goes, holy smokes. Yep. Now I know what kind of people I have to hire because they oh, need to yeah. hire people who understand infrastructure and growth and income statements and balance sheets, completely different. Now, of course, it's built around boats, but yeah. it's not the boat business. Right. So, right. so the only statement is a really cool way of reframing what you do because a lot of people uh, oddly will say to me, we're not special at anything. You know, we're not the only at anything. I said, okay, but well, let's, let's work through it. These people, they went when they when the light went on and everybody sort of locked and loaded on, they went, oh, my God, I never would have believed we could have thought about our business that way. When they created that only statement, they got rid of all their competition. Because the competition were flogging boats. These people are in the growth business of boat dealers. I love it. So it's extremely powerful, but it, but it doesn't it. come. And, and when I tell them it's 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 a draft, it makes them feel better too because now they can go test it, execute on it, and then we'll tweak it as we go through their life. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I, th I think it's great, and, and and again, it really makes you it, it shifts your thinking. That's for sure, right? And makes you sort of frame things differently and view things differently as well. So um, something I'll even think about myself. Uh, you know, I'll be the only audacious podcast the internet has to offer, right? You know what, I mean? <laughs> but, what have I created? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get that ahead. <laughs> now, um, uh, speaking of audaciousness, uh, you know, I think part of the reason why, why, why you being on the guest on the podcast here is that you, 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 you uh, specialize, if you will, in audacious leadership, right? And in terms of understanding what that is. I wonder if you can just give our listeners um, just a quick, a quick explanation of that. So uh, audacious leadership kind of puts a tag to, to the content that, that you and I have just been describing. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a way of life that's oriented towards execution. Okay. The how through people lighting their fires, 
getting them to do things that they care about. Um, and there's several components of that, that that I created for myself that that are quite unique. I mean, one, I call it uh, do, do it yourself. And this goes right in the face of delegation. Because most people say, and if you read all the textbooks, oh, to be a good leader, there's a use of the word, right? Good leader, you got to delegate. You got to right. delegate. My view is exactly the opposite. There are certain things that you should not delegate as a leader. Okay, you need to put your own fingerprints on this stuff. And I call it strategic micromanagement. For example, you know, selling a strategy in an organization should not be delegated to your business development vice president. You as the leader have got to sell it, you got to listen, and you got to convince people that it's the journey that should be taken. So I used to do that all the time terribly onerous again mm -hmm. pain strategic concept you know and and so forth so that whole idea of do it yourself putting the leader's fingerprints mm -hmm. on something I extremely important um th this concept that i tag called leadership by serving around a lot of people in the past have called it leadership by managing around and I, my view has always been that no that's never gone far enough leadership by serving around is all based on the leader asking how can i help now, the question, how can I help, is all about getting rid of the grunge, cleansing the inside that we talked about earlier, yep. of the things that impede execution. So it's yep. very strategic, okay, but it, it does different things. The last thing I'll mention is called line of sight. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons that execution doesn't happen well is, is uh, the role of every employee in the plan isn't articulated in a way that makes sense to them. And in fact, you know, Employee A may have a view of what they should be doing. Employee B in the same area may have a different view. So what happens is you get dysfunction setting in an organization because it's lack of clarity between what people do and the strategic intent of the plan. So what I used to do is I used to translate the strategy for every function. Okay. So here's what it means to sales. These are the things sales must do. Here's what you got to give up. Here's what you got to take on. Marketing, boom, boom, boom. So at the end of the day, everybody could look up to the strategy and say, okay, I get it. I get it. Not intellectually. I get it knowing the behaviors that I have to, <clears throat> I have to exhibit day in and day out. So those are kind of like the, the areas, but it goes on in terms of discovering what lights people's fires. They, yeah. they love getting rid of the stuff that doesn't matter. Yes. Matter. Yes. <laughs> and taking on more of the stuff that matters. Mm. The, 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 the word execution rings strong for me, Roy, as you, as you think about that is and, uh, and sort of the audacious leadership is and uh, it's, it's about taking that first step, taking that action. Um, you don't know if it'll work, but you'll try anyways. And, and at the very least, if you try and it doesn't work, then you learn the lesson and you move on. Right. And so I think all of those things uh, fit nicely into what we're talking about. Well, I, my, my, I ha <clears throat> my sort of strategic um, guide guide is is head west. Okay. We don't we're not smart enough to know what's going to happen two months from now. Uh, but let's just head west and and execute our way along and learn and plan and adjust and find out whether heading west gets us to Vancouver or whether it gets to Los Angeles or whether it gets to whatever. We'll figure it out on route. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Roy, this this is this is an awesome chat. Like, can 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 we get a, a plug there for for your book and maybe let our listeners know where they can pick up a copy or check it out? Well, my website is bedifferentorbedead.com. Thank you. And we've got uh, I blog every week. I've been blogging on this stuff since '09, so there's a lot of content on Be Different or Be Dead there. Oddly, um, mm -hmm. I've got a page that talks about my seven books, particularly my latest one, which which came out about nine months ago, called. The audacious, unheard of ways I took a startup to a billion in sales. Right. What I've tried to do there <clears throat> is refine the work, yep. right? Like everybody learns at a different level and a different way. So I kind of recast it around and made it. Uh, and every time I work on this and have conversations with guys like you, I, I learn more about my stuff just talking about it, which is pretty cool. Um, so there's that in there. You, hopefully that's a decent resource. And I guess lastly, I have a Gmail account, roy.osing at gmail.com. And I'm really happy to have a conversation with individuals who are, are interested in some of yeah. the work, uh, who want to pursue it. Like I get emails from people giving me their draft only statement saying, what do you think of this only statement, Roy? Love it. And I'm happy. I'm happy to have an engagement and conversation around that. Because yep. it means somebody's, 
it, it's, ma it's mattering to somebody. And if we make it matter to enough people, we're going to shift that bell curve, oddly, a little to the right. And that's, that's my definition of a good day. You're absolutely right, Roy. I'm with you all the way, uh, 100%. Um, man, this has been great. I really appreciate you, you, you taking the time to be on a podcast like this and, 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 and offering up some, some great insights. You're going to make me think a little bit more about myself and, and how I continue to make myself the only do want to do what I'm doing. Because again, differentiation is a key. And especially in such a crowded market space where everyone's vying for someone's attention through every single, whether it be social media or even just the, the news cycle, there's just so much going on. And so when you can stand out, like you said, and, 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 and make that difference and, and get people's attention, I think you're halfway there. Well, thank you very much for having me. And, uh, and thanks for being interested in, in the journey because we need more people, particularly in, in positions like you have to be promulgating that journey. And, 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 and being an, an advocate for the journey, being part of the advocate army for the journey is what we need. We just need to grow the critical mass. And so thank you for having me. And I appreciate the opportunity. I really do. Very cool, Roy. Thank you, my friend. And uh, congrats on the great work. Back we are here on the podcast and much thanks and appreciation goes out to Roy uh, for helping us understand why we need to break away from the herd and how important it is to us, um, the, the, the being different uh, and really the key elements of being an audacious leader, which he's demonstrated through his entire career. So again, Roy, thank you uh, for being here. Do remember his book, Be Different or Be Dead. It is available on his website and I'd encourage you to pick up a copy. You know, I truly appreciated so much of Roy had to share with us, but if there's just one thing that I would take from the chat that we had, it would have to be this. From an early age, we are taught the importance of conformity and adhering to societal norms. We're conditioned to fit into predefined molds that prioritize safety and sameness. However, when we live our truth, we're breaking away from the herd and we're doing things differently because they can lead to personal growth, innovation, and extraordinary achievements. Here are just three benefits of embracing your individuality and that transformative power of thinking outside of the box. By breaking free of the herd mentality, uh, we allow ourselves the opportunity for self-discovery. We can uncover our true passions, values, and beliefs that may have been overlooked because we're so busy watching others and conforming to societal norms. Doing so naturally allows us to embrace our individuality and cultivate our authentic selves. Doing these things often breeds innovation and creativity. When we're not confined by convention, we can see problems from unique angles, which may lead to innovative solutions. Creativity flourishes when we dare to think differently, challenge the status quo, and pursue those unconventional paths. The personal growth that comes from leaving the herd is invaluable. It allows us to step outside of our comfort zones and face fear head on. When we confront our fears, we give ourselves an opportunity to grow personally, building resilience and determination. As challenging as a road less travel can be, it can also offer essential life lessons that contribute to personal growth and character development. And then lastly, by committing to our own unique path, we have the potential to leave a lasting legacy. Whether it be a groundbreaking invention, a thought-provoking piece of art, or a movement that transforms society, those who break away from the herd have the power to shape the future and positively impact generations to come. You know, when we break away from the herd, we unlock a world filled with possibilities, growth, and fulfillment. From forging our own past to creating legacies, breaking away from the herd provides a space for extraordinary achievements. So let us dare to be different and embrace the transformative power of doing things in our own audacious way. We've sadly come to the end of another episode of the Audacious Living Podcast. And as always, I, I send my thanks and appreciation uh, to our amazing listeners, all those lovers of audaciousness. It's you are the individuals that, that keep this thing going. And because of that, I express my sincere thanks. Until next time, stay safe, be kind, show love to one another, and be audacious. You've been listening.
listening to the Audacious Living Podcast, hosted by Audley Stevenson. If you enjoyed what you heard, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Until next time, be audacious.